Hey, how are you? Wonderful. How are you, Andy? Great. A little cold. It's Come little, on in. It's a little bit colder in uh, Minnesota than Georgia. Yeah, yeah. It can get cold here. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me. Are you ready for your 73 questions? Dude, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Well, let's get started. What is your name? My name is Nick Parises. And what is your specialty? My specialty is diagnostic radiology. And uh, what year are you in training? I'm currently in my third year of training. Okay. Uh, where did you go to undergrad? I went to the University of California, Santa Cruz. Okay. Yep. And medical school? I went to the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, um, specifically in Bradenton, Florida. Yeah. I know there's plenty of campuses for yeah. it. Yeah. And did you take any gap years before going to medical school? Yeah, I did. I took, um, I took two gap years in between undergrad and uh, med school and kind of used that as a time to both work and kind of get my application ready to apply. Yeah. Not so uncommon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a couple years. Uh, what was your favorite part of medical school? Oh man, favorite part of med school. Um, I think, um, you know, I think it was like the flexibility that you have in med school because uh, my med school didn't have lectures or traditional lectures. We had some lectures. But it was mostly problem-based learning, case-based learning, and basically a lot of independent study. So you can kind of create your day um, however you wanted to. Um, <laughs> and so now things are a lot more structured uh, with work hours and that type of thing. But yeah, that's probably the, the one thing that I, that I miss. Gotcha. And so on that first day of med school, what specialty did you think you were going to go into? Oh man, I was probably the most undecided uh, med student. I was all over the place. You know, I was thinking internal medicine just because it gives you a lot of, a lot of different options for fellowship afterwards. Um, but I don't think at that point I had completely ruled out surgical specialties either. So that was still on the table. Um, and I don't even think I really <laughs> knew what radiology was or what radiologists do at that point in time. Yeah. So what changed your mind about medicine or even surgery? Um, probably the number one thing was lifestyle. Um, let's see, and about medicine, I mean, I think I just ended up liking radiology a lot more um, as far as um, interest, like, like personal interest, basically. I thought that the cases were like the best cases in medicine, basically. Um, and then there's a whole other host of factors about lifestyle that we can touch on. We'll probably get on. Maybe in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were there any specialties from the get-go you said, absolutely not for me? Um, yeah, I think uh, pediatrics, probably on that list. Um, probably pediatrics, uh, psychiatry, and OBGYN, although I ended up liking those two specialties more than I expected to. So. Yeah, kids aren't all that weird. <laughs> so what first made you fall in love with radiology? Well, um, I did a radiology rotation early on in third year of medical school when I was still undecided and when I was still doing rotations. Um, and at that point, I had only done an internal medicine rotation, so um, I was still pretty much unexposed to all of the other specialties. But as I went through third year, I would do a rotation and then always think back to that radiology rotation where um, I had a really great mentor, a really great attending. Um, we did a nice little research project together. Um, I ended up, you know, seeing myself being able to do that job to, um, you know, sit in a chair and look at images and interpret them. Um, like I saw myself being able to be a radiologist. Um, so there was a lot of aspects of the specialty that really resonated with me. So as I went on through, through the year, I started basically ruling everything else out. And then, you know, about three fourths of the way through third year, um, I think that was kind of when I just decided, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm all in on radiology. This is, this is it. Gotcha. <laughs> and as one of the road specialties, AKA the most popular and arguably <laughs> most competitive medical specialties out there, um, I know the class of 2023 in my med school matched very, very well in diagnostic radiology um, with a lot of people choosing to do so. Sure, there will be many that will want to know how long does your training take after med school? Yeah, so, you know, people are always surprised to, to find out that radiology residency is six years. So that's four years of 
high school, four years of college, four years, four years of medical school, and then six years of residency. So it's, so it's your first year where you do an internship and you do four years of diagnostic radiology training and then typically a one-year fellowship. Okay. So sometimes those fellowships can be two years depending on what you do, but almost um, you know, the vast majority are one year. Gotcha. So, so, if you, so if you add all of those up, you're, at, you're looking at 14 years if you don't take any gap years. So you can do the math if you do take gap years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and what uh, subspecialties are there within radiology? Yeah, there's so many. There's, um, so there's musculoskeletal radiology, there's neuroradiology, there's pediatric radiology, um, there's breast imaging, uh, nuclear, nuclear imaging. Um, let's see if I'm forgetting any. Um, there's uh, thoracoabdominal or body radiology, and sometimes people will, will separate it into um, cardiopulmonary or chest or thoracic imaging, and then abdominal pelvic imaging. Um, so um, that's most of the, the diagnostic specialties. And then there's also interventional and neurointerventional radiology. So um, I think that's all of them. <laughs> Shout out Dr. Cellini. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So did you ever consider getting any other degrees like an MBA or an MPH? I know it's pretty popular now. Yeah, you know, I, I thought about it, but um, I don't think I kind of seriously entertained it just because of the time and money cost. Um, and I don't, I don't know that you necessarily need those degrees um, to do what I want to do, which is practice clinical radiology, basically. Um, that's not to say that they can't help you. I think they definitely can help kind of craft the career that, that you that you want to have or might want to have. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say is the most unique part about your specialty? The most unique part, I mean, I don't think, um, well, we sit in a chair, like I said earlier, we sit in a chair we, and we look at pictures, basically. We look at images and um, we make diagnoses. So that's kind of unique to um, our specialty is that we are diagnosticians, so we are making diagnoses, you know, pathology um, also makes uh, hard diagnoses as well. Um, but they're looking at, you know, microscopic slides and biopsies and that type of thing, tissue samples. Um, we're looking at imaging, so it's, it's vastly different in that aspect, so, yeah. yeah. Now, one of my favorite parts of these interviews is I allow the, the resident pending, whoever I'm interviewing, is to sell their specialty like a car salesman to all these bright young pre-meds. So, why should someone choose your specialty? So many, honestly, so many reasons, but you know, probably for me, the, the number one or maybe number two reasons would be um, is that we see the best cases in medicine or the most interesting cases because some of the sickest patients in the hospital and the most complex patients, they receive a lot of imaging. So we are exposed to you know, those really complex cases. Um, and we also are often the first ones to make a, a, uh, a very rare diagnosis or to see a very rare syndrome. So I think, I think that makes it for uh, both a very challenging specialty, but also a very uh, you know, personally rewarding and a very uh, interesting specialty. Um, so that's like the, the radiology side of things, but um, you know, kind of the, the lifestyle part of it, I think is really awesome too. Uh, because you can have the flexibility to do a lot of procedures in your in your practice, you can have the uh, flexibility to work from home and really do no procedures. Um, you can have the flexibility of picking a specialty where you are seeing patients, or picking a specialty where a subspecialty, I should say, where you're not seeing patients. So you really have a lot of flexibility, and uh, you know some of that stems from um, the fact that radiology is, for the most part, shift work. So some other specialties are shift work, like anesthesiology is uh, shift work, I think, and so is emergency medicine. So, you know, it's pretty nice not to have to worry about work after you're done with work, more or less. But not to say that there's not studying to do, you know, in residency afterwards or things to keep up, up to date on afterwards. But yeah. So turning around, <laughs> why should someone not do your specialty? Yeah, probably the number one reason might be if you don't like to study a lot. <laughs> um, I personally don't mind studying, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, you do have to know quite a lot. Um, our our uh, kind of board exam, if you will, or the core exam is like a three-day test of like, I think, 720 questions. 
So there is, there's a lot of information to know um, and for good reason. Um, so that's probably one reason that you might not want to do radiology. And the second reason might be kind of similar to that is, is the length of training. It's just the fact that it is one of the longer uh, training routes. So it's a six year uh, residency basically. So, um, and I say six because, you know, over 90% of residents choose to do a fellowship. So it's almost kind of guaranteed that you're gonna be doing a fellowship anyways. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, fun question. Are there any stereotypes about your specialty? Um, probably that we're uh, socially awkward introverts um, who <laughs> like to sit in a dark room and not talk to anyone or see any patients. There's that joke of, you know, how do you hide a dollar from a radiologist or, um, you know, then there's the joke of, you know, fill in the blank specialty. Um, and so for how do you, how do you hide a dollar from a radiologist is, you know, you give it to a patient because <laughs> uh, they don't see patients, but it's actually untrue because we do, we do see patients. Um, so that's, that's probably the stereotype. And um, as, as far as, is it true or not? You know, I think, um, I think radiology attracts people from all sorts of different personalities and all sorts of different interests. So um, definitely some people are more introverted uh, than others, but we definitely have a good segment of people who are totally, you know, socially extroverted. And then people who are, you know, in the middle who, you know, wh whatever you want to call them, extroverted introverts or vice versa. So exactly. yeah, we have all, all sorts of different types of people. And I mean, that's the spice of life, a little bit of variety. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think oh. so. I think we're going to make some tea. What I would love that. that. Awesome. Um, I'm thinking of grabbing some chamomile that is uh, specifically from, from Greece. I went to, <laughs> to Athens to visit family back in uh, just a few months ago, so we brought some back with us. I'm all for it. Thank you. Okay. No. So next question. With any stage of medical training from a third-year med student to the second-year resident or even third-year resident, yeah. there's this concept of on-the-spot testing of random medical knowledge called pimping. So... What is the craziest question that you've ever been asked by an attending? Oh man, craziest question? Um, sorry, the water's boiling there. Um, gosh, I can't think one. Think of one off the top of my head. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, we can we can circle back to to that one. I can't, okay. Can't think of anything. Usually, this is the question that brings out some like deep rooted med school trauma from anybody that I <laughs> interview. Um, so yeah, yeah, I definitely can. You know, it can be tough to be on a rotation sometimes, but absolutely. Yeah. Now, kind of a general question: What does an average day for you look like? Yeah, I mean, so number one is like any good question. It depends. Uh, it depends on the rotation. Uh, it depends on if you're on call uh, or not. Um, but you know, generally speaking, in residency, anyways, um, the workday starts at seven thirty, and then it ends at four thirty. So it's typically Monday through Friday and then not working weekends or nights. But, you know, when you're on call, you might be working weekends or nights. And so um, probably the longest shift that you will work uh, in residency anyways is uh, 14 hours long. So that might be like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or any variation of that it might be a night shift of 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. So what is the extent of your personal patient interaction? Um, well, again, it depends on the rotation. Um, I think maybe breast imaging and interventional radiology probably have the most patient interaction. Um, and yeah, there's, there's some rotations like chest imaging, for example, where we don't do procedures and um, we don't really see patients really all that much. But there are other rotations like... Um, I think maybe body imaging might be a good example where you're doing where you're you're doing fluoroscopic procedures. Um, you know, you're working with the patient and instructing them on how to ingest the the liquid barium to obtain the imaging. Um, again, in pediatric imaging, we do see a handful of patients throughout the day. Um, it can be as little as you know two or three um, in a day, or it can be as most as many as like eight to ten. So, it just depends on like what you're doing. Are you doing procedures like biopsies, or are you doing like fluoroscopy and and that type of thing, and sometimes you're you're even going into the um, into the room with the uh, with the technologist, the radiologist technologist, um, like for example with like the ultrasound probe, and then you're scanning in real time um, 
you, like you're doing the scanning yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, you know, you're talking with the sonographer and talking with your attending about what's going on. So, and then potentially relaying that to the patient as well. Yeah. So, so how many scans do you see on an average day? Um, again, it, you know, it depends on the rotation. Um, let's say like if you're on call, um, you might average probably easily a hundred scans in a, in a shift. So, um, yeah, let's say anywhere from 50 to a hundred because that can, you know, it, it, it depends again because of the imaging modality. Like for example, if you're reading a lot of CT and MRI, um, you might be reading less studies, but those take a little bit longer to read. Um, the cases might be more complex at certain types of in institutions or practices um, as opposed to maybe like a more community setting where you're getting a lot more normals um, or any other <laughs> practice where you're getting a, let's say, you know, 20 to 30 plain films, 20 to 30 ultrasounds, and then, you know, 10 to 20 CTs and then 5 to 10 MRIs. Just, I don't know if that adds up to 100, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, you might have some nuclear medicine studies in there, maybe some uh, some mammo in there. So it just depends on kind of what you're what you're doing in your practice. Yeah. So what's the, the kind of personal record for amount of scans you've seen in a day? Um, I think I topped out at about 120, uh, but some other you know some other residents I've heard have read upwards of 160. So just depends on if you luck out during a trauma season in the summer, or uh, or what have you. Yeah. Now, kind of an interesting question. What is the scariest scan you've ever seen? Oh man, scariest scan, that's a good question. Um, so certain scans are scary for, for different reasons. Um, so, I mean, for example, I'm thinking of one particular patient where I think I opened up this uh, CT chest, abdomen, pelvis. And basically there was, you know, I think this patient was relatively young, early 20s, and there's just metastatic disease everywhere, you know, in the soft tissues, you know, in all of the abdomen, all throughout the chest, nodules everywhere. And this particular patient had a really rare type of, um, of cancer. Um, so it's just one of those cases where you open it up, you look at the age, you look at, you know, briefly, like broadly what's going on. And you're like, oh man, this is your heart really, um, your heart really sinks. So it's pretty, pretty terrible in that way. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, you know, that's, you know, cancer can be more of a chronic disease. You know, then there's the acute setting where you're maybe dealing with a, uh, a trauma patient in the emergency department, and you just see like the injuries that they have. You see the fracture, the skull fractures that they have, the facial fractures that they have, um, all of the bleeding that's going on. Uh, maybe there's bleeding, you know, behind the eye or in the orbit itself. Um, there might be intracranial hemorrhage, as well as subdural hemorrhage, as well as subarachnoid hemorrhage, midline shift, um, you know, diffuse cerebral edema, just that brain swelling and potentially like herniating. Um, so probably the most recent case now that I'm thinking about it was on call where I saw um, uh, bas basically a patient that I knew was brain dead based on uh, based on the CT scan just because of how much um, diffuse brain swelling there was and just the fact that I could see uh, the brain itself herniating through frame and magnum and, um, and that type of thing, so. Gotcha. Yeah. So kind of twisting it on a positive note, what is the most memorable scan you've had so far? Oh man, most memorable? Um, well, I don't know, man. We, we see a lot of scans, a lot of normals, so it's, it's good to see just a frank, uh, just a plain old normal. Um, so I can't, I can't particularly think of a memorable one. Sometimes the ones that are, are memorable, kind of like we were talking about just now, are, are some of the, you know, uh, the most terrifying exams just because they really stick with you. Mm -hmm. so. so what is the biggest pet peeve when people order scans for you? Well, I think I would, I think I'm speaking on behalf of almost every radiologist um, when I say that our biggest pet peeve is is really just not having a history or an indication or some sort of you know reason in the comments that we're getting the scan. Sometimes it's as you know silly as um, you know the history is like not on file or like please schedule the scan on like a Tuesday, or it's just a period or it's uh, pain. But it's like okay, well where is the pain? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, is it focal? <laughs> you know, um, so that's probably the most 
difficult part. I know sometimes clinicians might not want to um, quote unquote bias the radiology read, but really, I mean, we, we are here to answer a clinical question, I think. So uh, we, we want to be as helpful as we can be. So having a good indication or clinical history is, um, is super important for us. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is the toughest part of your job, I think, in your opinion? Um, the toughest part, probably, um, I think, I think it's just, um, it's a combination of, uh, staying hyper-focused for, um, for the entire shift that you're working. So staying focused for a long time, um, and really trying not to make a mistake and, um, and, uh, and, it's hard to stay focused, not because of the work itself, but because there are so many interruptions throughout the day. Um, so I think that is one very challenging part. I think we all get a lot better at that as we, as we progress through training and into attending hood. Uh, but that's definitely challenging and probably, you know, another difficult part is just the sheer amount of knowledge that you have to have. The fund of knowledge is very, very vast because if you think about it, radiology really, you know, it interacts with almost every specialty in the hospital and yes, it even interacts with, uh, with psychiatry. Um, I think I, I read a scan, a, a head CT um, the other day, and um, I think we found like a, a, a brain tumor uh, that ended up being a meningioma in a patient that was only having psychiatric symptoms or you know, was being worked up by psych. So you can still see you know, organic pathology uh, in that setting as well. So okay. yeah. Now, what is the most rewarding part of your job? Most rewarding, you know, it's, um, it's, it's knowing that at the end of the day, um, the patient that you are literally seeing on the, on the diagnostic monitor, on the computer screen, um, is going to be receiving the treatment that they need to receive. Like they're going to be getting the right chemotherapy or they're going to be getting that biopsy that they need um, or that follow-up imaging scan. Um, I think that's, that's very, very rewarding knowing that you're having a um, high impact on patient care. Um, I also personally f find a rewarding uh, talking with other clinicians, like when they come down to the reading room to discuss a case. Um, I think that's, that's awesome. I love talking with surgeons when they come down or infectious disease doctors or whoever wants to, to chat about an interesting or challenging case. So. All right, so we got some quick fire questions about that lifestyle that okay. radiologists all love to talk about. Yeah. So, how many hours do you work in an average week? Um, average week, let's say, let's say 40 um, in residency. Um, if I'm on call, it could be like, let's say 55 to 60. So let's say on average, let's say 50. Okay. Yeah. What time do you normally wake up? Uh, normally between 6 and 6.30. What time do you normally leave the hospital? Um, typically at 4.30. Um, sometimes a little bit later if there's something to, to work on, but typically mm -hmm. before 5.00. How many hours of sleep are you typically working on? Uh, typically seven to eight. How many hours of sleep are you working on right now? Well, we were, I was able to sleep in last night since it's uh, the weekend. Um, so I think I'm working on eight or nine hours, so doing good. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you answered this earlier, but do you have to take call? Uh, yes, but call is a little bit different in radiology because you're, so call in radiology is, it, it's not like you're going to be on call for, let's say, 48 hours or 24 hours. Um, call in radiology is basically you working a, a 9 or, uh, let's say, 12-hour or 14-hour shift. And you are one of the, you know, go-to radiologists in the hospital. Like, you are one of the few radiologists working in the hospital. You may be one of two or three. Um, so that's one part of it. And the other part of it is the fact that you are reading all of the stat imaging. So almost all of the imaging that is um, going on in the emergency department. And you're also responsible for all of the inpatient imaging. So as you can imagine, in, in a four or five or 600 bed hospital, uh, it can get pretty, pretty busy on a shift, especially when you have really complex patients. Um, so uh, that's kind of how call works. And um, you know, call is a little bit different at every institution. At, at, at every uh, institution, but that's kind of how it, um, it, it works at, uh, at my institution, so. Okay. Uh, night shift or day shift person? Um, definitely, definitely day shift, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how long does it take you to chart at the end of your day? Um, zero minutes, because we don't write notes, which is awesome. That right there in itself is 
enough for people to go into radiology. Yeah, it's nice because, you know, our, our quote-unquote note-taking is kind of built into our workflow, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, who are you most thankful for on your care team? Oh, shoot, on my care team. Um, I think the, the techs, the, the technologists, the radiology technologists. Yeah. And what is the wildest foreign body image you've come across? <laughs> Um, well, um, I think I'm going to come across a lot more, but, um, just one that comes to mind is just very, very simple, uh, uh a child that ingested a coin. So, yeah. <laughs> but again, you can imagine we see foreign bodies that go in all, you know, that can be anywhere in the body. So, <laughs> yeah. What's the most common medical advice you give to patients? Um, well, you know, we, we are serving kind of more of a diagnostic role, so we're not really making that many hard recommendations per se. Um, so, so maybe it's not directly applicable to, to diagnostic radiology, I don't think, but um, probably the most general advice that I would give to anyone really is like just talking about the importance of lifestyle um, as far as sleep, you know, nutrition, exercise, stress management, um, you know, social connectivity, like all of that kind of wellness stuff that that we know we all we all should be doing more of. Yep. So. And fun little question, and this is half a joke. How many hours of light do you see on an average day? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm looking at um, a really bright, um, like 6K monitor that costs $20,000. That doesn't count as light. <laughs> that doesn't count as light. <laughs> um, you know, it depends. If it's a weekend, you know, I'm out, and I'm out and about, then I'm obviously outdoors, but. Um, you know, during the winter, especially in the Midwest, they can get, um, the days can get really short. So sometimes, you know, it could be just a half hour of light if that, <laughs> so. Okay. So we've talked a lot about your life inside the hospital. How about your life when you clock out? So what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Um, probably my, my number one hobby, I guess, is playing traditional Greek folk music. So I play the, uh, instruments behind me. So the one on the left is called a crate lira, and the one on the right is called a uh, mandolin. Um, and so that's probably my number one hobby. Um, I do play for um, for things that I'm invited to play for, things like a wedding or a baptism, but also for uh, certain like kind of more formal dinner parties, but also for um, dance groups, like a traditional Greek folk dance group that might be having a, a performance or a competition. Um, so, so yeah, that's probably my, my number one hobby. Yeah. So you have a significant other? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, uh, does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. What's the I'm weirdest sure. question a family or friend has ever asked you? Oh man. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's like, uh, what do you think about this supplement or like, you know, it's typically a skin thing. Yeah. Which... <laughs> always derm stuff. It's always it's always derm stuff, right? Rashes or something. Yep. Yeah. Um, any pets? No pets, but I always grew up with uh, with dogs. So. Okay. So favorite animal, not a dog or cat. Favorite animal. Um, how about how about elephant? I like elephant. Good one. <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Oh man, um, doesn't have to be historical figure, right? Nope. Probably. Probably my dad's dad. So basically the grandfather that I was unable to meet basically just because he had passed away before, before yeah. I was born. What do you think you guys would be eating at said dinner? Um, hopefully some uh, really awesome uh, Greek food. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, what's your favorite dish to eat? Well, okay, my favorite dish is probably um, this, this dish called pastizio. Uh, it's, the best way I can describe it is basically a, uh, a Greek lasagna. Yeah. It's uh it's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Any favorite restaurants around here? Around here, yeah, there's there's a bunch. Um let's see. Well, um Tilia, Martina and Ro Rosalie are really good. Um but yeah, yeah, I could rattle off a whole bunch of <laughs> uh coffee, tea or soda person. Oh man. Only one? <laughs> you can have multiple. Okay, well, I'll uh I'll stick to I think coffee definitely. But um, I do love tea. I mean, obviously, I'm brewing tea right now. So. Yeah. Um, how much water should you be drinking every day? I think, I think the right answer to that is basically drink when you're thirsty and drink until you're, um, 
your pee is, you know, not dark yellow, basically. <laughs> uh, favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if you have one. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, um, probably, probably, funny enough, the, the, um, there's this really good curry dish at the county hospital, and the county hospital has really, really awesome food. Um, I mean, I've eaten at definitely more than, you know, 10 different hospitals and tried their food, so um, I feel pretty confident when I say that the county hospital here has really awesome food. All right. Top three music artists for you. Oh, man. Well, if I rattled off any, any Greek musicians, I don't think you're, any of the audience would, would know them necessarily. But, um, you know, I, I generally listen to um, kind of R&B, hip-hop, um, pop, and that type, of, that type of thing as far as uh, American music is concerned. But, yeah. you know, I like classic rock, too, and it just depends. <laughs> Favorite song at the moment. And do you guys play music in the darkroom? Um, we do. I think it depends on the person. So some people like total silence, but, um, some people do like having background music. I like having music. So I have a, I always have a portable speaker in my backpack that I can just, you know, pop on my desk and then turn on. So, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> what's, what's the favorite song going on in the dark room at the moment? Oh man, I have to, I have to look at my Spotify playlist for that, but uh, I have a whole like on-call playlist that maybe, oh, that's beautiful. maybe we can link to it if, <laughs> if anyone's interested. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, uh, the infamous question: pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh man, I think I think for me it's a no. Okay. Uh, any artistic hobbies you keep up with? I know you pointed to the instruments behind you. Yeah, I think I think that counts as artistic. Yeah. Um, as far as drawing, uh, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite movie or TV show? Oh man, um, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, what's um. Let me let me come back to that. I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of the movie right now, but I, I can't I can't think of um, I can think of the actor in it, but I can't think of the, the who's title the actor. Um, shoot, who is it? Um, it? Has to do with magicians and shoot. Maybe we can edit this part out. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of blanking here. Um, now you see me. Um, that was a good one. Anyways. Shoot, I can't think of one. Guys, comment what uh, Nick's favorite movie is. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> so, what's one random task you wish you could be better at? A random task? Um, ran I mean, maybe public speaking could be in that camp of random task. Um, but, yeah, I just, think, um, I, think, I just think communication is really, really important. And I guess I wish that was stress a little bit earlier in my <laughs> development, if you will. Yeah. So I think, and like public speaking is like such a, such a great skill. I think mm. it's indispensable, um, not only for, you know, s stuff like YouTube, but also just for like giving a lecture at work or just like, you know, um, picking up the microphone at like a wedding and like, you know, running with it. So, yeah. So what's the best way that you relax after a long day, long day? Um, it's pretty simple, you know, come back home, you know, catch up with, uh, catch up with my wife, um, you know, have dinner and, um, you know, probably uh, light a candle, uh, make some tea after dinner, uh, throw on some TV and uh, just chill on the couch, basically. Nice. Yeah. So night in or go out on the town kind of person? Um, it depends. It depends. Um, I think, you know, if I had to pick one, probably go out on the town, um, but Especially with COVID now, I think we've all become a little bit more homebodied, so um, we can definitely be content by uh, staying in. So, yeah. so indoors or outdoors? Well, on that same note, you know, I think we've <laughs> all become pretty content with staying in. But um, yeah, I'll pick I'll pick indoors for that one, just because I can I can stay indoors and I can play my music and be totally happy. <laughs> yeah, beach or mountains? Uh, definitely beach. Definitely beach. Yeah. Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? Um, I think, I think I'm a little bit more extroverted than introverted, but I do definitely value my, you know, my time alone and time to think and yeah. that type of thing. Was that personality trait a factor in you choosing your specialty? Um, maybe, um, I think maybe sometimes a reason why people don't, um, see themselves being able to want to do radiology is because they can't like, or they don't want to be able to like sit down and focus for that long, for example, like they're like fidgety or like they have to get up or something. Um, but 
not necessarily a problem for me. But again, I don't necessarily consider myself introverted either. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're getting close to the end. Um, as we wrap up, okay. I want to ask kind of the few reflective questions. So what did you think you were going to grow up um, to be when you were a kid? Yeah. Um, so, so when I was younger, I don't think my parents really pushed me to think too hard about what I wanted to do. So, um, I didn't, um, I was never like fixated on doing any one thing. So when I got to college, there was a lot of career exp exploration. And so it wasn't until the end of college when I decided on medical school, like, okay, I'm all in. Um, so there really wasn't any one particular thing. I think in high school, there was a moment where, you know, I definitely saw myself doing something in healthcare, but I, again, I really wasn't, wasn't sure quite, um, what that might be. Okay. Is there a different specialty you think you could have done? Honestly, now that I'm, I'm in radiology, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's the, it's the best kept secret in medicine for sure. I, I've heard that from multiple specialties. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Guess to each their own. For sure, for sure. Now, if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Um, I didn't do medicine, and um, like, like, are we talking about a career? Or are we career? <laughs> okay, career. So, if we're talking career, then I think there was a point early on in college where I took a computer science course. So maybe I would have had a career in tech. Not quite sure how that would have panned out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now. Everyone knows that throughout through med school, through residency training, it's definitely difficult. Were there any times you doubted you would make it as a doctor? Oh man, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, during during uh, the early years of medical school, when you are like studying day in day out, honestly, you're studying so much that you don't you don't really know like is this going to pay off? Like, am I doing the right thing? Like, will I be happy like down the line? Um, and you don't really know where you're going to end up for residency. So there's a lot of like question marks. So you definitely like question yourself in that sense. But you also question yourself because there's so many other really talented and extremely, extremely gifted and smart people around you. And so all of a sudden, like everyone, a lot of people know stuff that you don't know. So you're like, oh, shoot, am I behind? Am I really cut out for this type of deal? So I think there is a lot of that imposter syndrome. And I think generally speaking, that, that gets better over the years. But, you know, even in residency, I, I think a lot of people do somewhat question themselves like, oh, am I really cut out for this? Am I going to be a good radiologist? Am I going to be a good surgeon, for example? Um, like, am I doing the right stuff? Am I studying enough? Am I studying the right things? Uh, am I getting enough exposure at work to the right cases? So there's always a little bit of that baseline anxiety, but, um, you know, it does get better over the years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? Oh man, one thing, huh? Probably whatever happens or whatever is going on with insurance companies, just <laughs> we have to solve that problem. I mean, that's a huge, huge issue in healthcare, I think. Yeah. Now, what can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into your specialty? You know, I think there's, there's no secret, really. It's it's a lot of the, the same things that you, you would be doing um, to go into any competitive specialty, really. Um, it's a lot of the, the same stuff. So it's like studying hard. And by studying hard, I mean like basically studying as, as best as you can study, basically. Like, are you, are you basically trying your best is, is I think, the, the bottom line. Um, so it's doing a lot of the, the, the just bread and butter basic things like studying, studying hard, like doing well on your exams in med school. Uh, that will set you up for success for, um, for doing well on your board exams, getting good uh, you know, evaluations on your rotations, getting good letters of recommendation, um, and doing all of those really basic things. And then, and then there's other things that you would do for really any specialty, like maybe going to a conference, publishing a research article in that specialty that you can do for radiology that I think helps. And then, you know, don't forget about networking. I think, um, I think networking is very important as well. So, yeah, I think that's, that's what anyone can really do to set them up for success in radiology because, um, you know, you, have, you won't really decide on doing radiology until you get to third year in medical school when you do a rotation. You kind of have a better idea about what it is. So I would say don't, don't stress out too much about that quite yet.
That's reassuring. Yeah. No. If you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences that got you where you are right now? You know, I don't, I don't think I would. No. I think that's mirrored very closely with basically every physician I've interviewed. Yeah, so. because a lot of all those experiences turn you into the physician that you are today or the physician that you will become after residency and, you know. Amen to that. Yeah. But we made it. Question <laughs> 73. Ready? Ready. Finally, what would you say to the aspiring diagnostic radiologist right now? Basically, I would say welcome to the best kept secret in medicine. Um, I think we get to have our cake and eat it too. Um, I think it's a awesome, awesome specialty. And basically, welcome to radiology. Very well said. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for having me in Minnesota. And best of luck as you continue your training. Awesome. Thank you, Andy.